I think panpsychism is, is physically incoherent because panpsychists take elementary subatomic particles to be little beads. But we, we have known since at least Feynman in the 40s and quantum electrodynamics that that's not what elementary subatomic particles are. Uh, they can't be like that. I've had conversations with, with many, many, many philosophers, including the guests that I mentioned earlier. And it always comes down to this, you know, recursion of, of you know, uh, infinite turtles <laughs> kind of all the way down. Um, whereas we kind of know consciousness when we see it. And I guess my, my, my question, you know, to you is that, you know, if we have a, um, uh, this evolutionary propensity to develop consciousness as you, I believe, but always correct me if I'm wrong, Bernardo, because I, I may have gotten this wrong, uh, you know, in all the preparation I was doing. But I believe that you believe that that evolution, you know, has kind of uh, provided a mechanism by which the experience of consciousness that we perceive has taken place. And I know that Donald Hoffman has this desktop interface modality in which he has an analogy for how we perceive it. But um, but both of those are kind of driven by evolu Darwinian evolutionary uh, uh, mandates. But I wonder what. Isn't there kind of a, a, a disconnect? Because we don't see animals, you know, conscious in exactly the same way, even though they've been evolving. You know, we've had 50,000 generations of certain E. coli strands. They don't seem to exhibit consciousness as far as we can tell. Or is that just a bias that I have as a human being, that my consciousness is better than an electron's, you know, panpsychic consciousness? Am I wrong? Shouldn't we expect to see if evolution really does drive? Why is there only one species of one primate <laughs> Of all the different primates, of all the millions of species, why is there only one that exhibits plausible notion of what we call consciousness? Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, um, sorry. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick various departing points. Take your time. Um, if you study uh, microscopic life closely, I think you would be amazed how many signs of private conscious in our life uh, single cellular or organisms uh, uh, manifest. Um, you can watch amoeba, single-celled organisms, building little vases, little houses out of mud particles they pick from the bottom of the puddle where they live. And then they, they enter it and they, they live in there. You can watch paramecium uh, go after food, navigate what is essentially a labyrinth, going after food, running away from threats. Um, it is baffling if you observe carefully how many signs of conscious in their life, essentially all life manifests. Um, and they all metabolize like we do. <clears throat> they all do protein folding, transcription, ATP burning, uh, ATP burning, not all of them, but uh, they share many of the fundamental traits of life that we have. So I would, I would uh, uh, dispute the premise of your question hmm. that uh, only highly evolved animals like maybe, you know, primates and pachyderms and cetaceans uh, exhibit uh, signs of conscious in their life. Um, many animals, for instance, uh, corvidians, uh, they, they express a sorrow. They, they do little rituals around their fallen comrades. Um, I, I live with three cats. I have ha had animals all my life. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that they, they have conscious in their life. Now, I don't think consciousness itself has evolved. I think consciousness as an ontological category, as a type of existence, is where it all begins from. It's what is there from the get-go. So it didn't evolve. I think what evolved are dissociated complexes of a field of raw phenomenal consciousness that spans the entirety of nature. And what those dissociated complexes look like is what we call biology, is what we call life. And then the inner mental complexity of these dissociated processes, that evolved as well. And, they, and, 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 and these organisms um, evolved over time, higher level mental functions that were not there in nature in the beginning. For instance, what we just talked about, metacognition, self-awareness. Uh, 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 these are things that have evolved within life, within dissociated complexes of primary consciousness, so to say. But consciousness as an ontological category was there from the beginning. And there I am with Professor Donald Hoffman. We, we both think that, that 
consciousness was there from the beginning, but the contents of consciousness or the specific configuration of consciousness that has evolved over time because of you no know, fitness criteria entailed by our ecosystem. How could you distinguish that type of collective behavior as, you know, physicist Philip Anderson said, more is different. He didn't say necessarily that, you know, more is better, more is worse. He said it's different. In other words, the collective behavior of a pile of grains of sand is very different than a hundred million times one grain of sand's behavior. Uh, we, we have emergent phenomena that comes up. Um, again, I, I mean, uh, to push back, I mean, couldn't you say then that sand grains are conscious? I mean, in the panpsychic sense, it seems to me that there could be, well, when they get too heavy and they have too much, uh, you know, at risk to the to the sand grain colony, I'm just making this up, please humor me, uh, uh, then they collapse. And that's, you know, that's good for the, you know, it's like a colony of bees collapsing because sometimes you need to have a new genetic strand that kills off the bat. Anyway, I'm, I'm making all this up. But, but um, I mean, who are we? Aren't we applying a selective filter um, to the definition of consciousness that's not necessarily you know, intrinsic to it, you know, the famous, the map is not the territory. I, I hate that phrase because I have, I have a, I actually have uh, some territory that's a map. And, and I say the map is the territory. I'm just kidding. Uh, but, but, you know, could you not say the similar, similar things, although much, much weaker about grains of sand, um, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, eukaryotic life forms and, uh, and perhaps, uh, electrons themselves. I mean, this is getting into panpsychism. So maybe you could say something about your thoughts on panpsychism. Um, contrary to living organisms that do manifest behaviors that are very suggestive of their being correlated with conscious inner life, I don't think grain, grains of sand manifest any behavior that would suggest that they are conscious. Um, you alluded to Anderson and, and more is different. Um, I, I don't think Anderson was defending some kind of, uh, um, how to say, strong emergence. I think what he was highlighting is that there may be organizing, fundamental organizing principles in nature mm -hmm. that kick in only when systems pass a certain threshold of complexity. Because why would all the laws of physics manifest only at the microscopic level? There may be organizing principles that kick in at higher levels. And there, there is some suggestive evidence in science that certain behaviors of nature cannot be reduced to first principles at the microscopic level. So mm -hmm. that's how I would, I would interpret that. But I wouldn't interpret that at all as a defense of consciousness as some kind of strongly emergent uh, a property, because I don't think that that's there uh, at all. Regarding panpsychism, I am very critical of it. Mm -hmm. um, you see, I think they, there are many errors they make, but one way to frame the error is to confuse the structure of what is perceived for the structure of the perceiver. If, hmm. if you th I'll repeat it so it sinks mm -hmm. in. Pan psychists confuse the structure of what is perceived with the structure of the perceiver. And, and the thought goes like this. If I look at uh, a, a, an organism, it's made of parts. It's made of cells. Those cells are made of molecules. And I, as the observer, I have a body like that, also made of cells. Therefore, my mind should be, should be made of parts and should be constituted of some kind of microscopic uh, sea of consciousnesses that come together in my brain. Well, that is mistaking the structure of what is perceived for the structure of the perceiver. I think there are many reasons why panpsychism is untenable. One is logical. You cannot have a explicit and logical account for how micro-level subjectivities can combine to form a higher level seemingly unitary subjectivity, such as my inner life of your inner life. Um, another reason, and, and you know, you're a physicist that, uh, that, that will come closer to home for you, I think panpsychism is physically incoherent because panpsychists take elementary subatomic particles to be little beads. Uh, and but we, we have known since at least Feynman in the 40s and quantum electrodynamics that's, that's not what elementary subatomic particles are. Uh, th they can't be like that. Otherwise, we cannot account for quantum fluctuations. That there are so many things. We cannot account even for the interactions of particles because particle interactions are not given to us by, by, by quantum theory. They're given to us only by quantum field theory. And under quantum field theory, 
particles are ripples of quantum fields, which are themselves spatially unbound and span the whole of nature. So panpsychism assumes that particles are little beads, while we have known, arguably, since the 1920s, I know some physicists would say, no, 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 you're full of shit, that since the 1940s, don't take away this prize from Feynman, fine. Since the 1940s, we have known that that's not what particles are. So right. yeah, no, it's it, it's a hopeless, it's a hopeless uh, uh, on yeah, project. Yeah, I agree.